So today we're going to take a photograph that's lacking a little bit of colour, give it a little bit of Photoshop magic, creating some gel lighting effects and change it into this. Let's go! So for this tutorial, even though we've got a portrait in front of us, it doesn't mean that this tutorial is exclusive only to portrait photography. You can apply the same effects to anything. Now it may work a little bit better for portraits, but it's not to say that it's exclusive. So either way, what we're going to start off with is our image here, which as we said at the start, it's not really got that much color, just really skin tones and this zip down the middle of our model's outfit. But now what we're going to try and do is funk it up a little bit, add some colors, add some maybe blues and some pinks coming in either side to make as it look it was lit by gels in a studio setting. So to do so, we're going to start off with our layers. Let's bring our panel a little bit closer into the middle of the frame so we can see all what we're doing together. Now it's a simple case of using adjustment layers and you can start your adjustment layer by using this little icon in the bottom corner of your layers panel. Simply press on that and then select gradient. Now this initial gradient will be taken from the colors that are on your swatches over on the right on the left hand side even of your screen. But with that said, you can still change it. If the colors you've got aren't right, you can simply click on the gradient itself then actually click on this gradient bar at the bottom here. So if we start off with our blue, we'll click on our blue to make it the master color. And then it's just a case of moving it around um, the color picker to kind of pick a tone that you quite like. Now we're gonna go with a blue, we're gonna go with a soft blue. I think somewhere around about there is quite nice, but you can choose your own, it's completely down to yourself. Um, so we're gonna leave the other end transparent. So this blue is gonna fade in from blue then to nothing. And again, we now can choose the angle. So currently it's working from bottom to top, but we wanna change that from left to right to give the idea that there's a, a blue light on the left-hand side of our image. And then we'll do the same again with a pink one on the opposite side. So let's set our angle to zero. So we've got it at a perfect 90 degrees now, or zero degrees, but 90 degrees from the 90 degrees that we had before. <laughs> anyway, so we'll set that there. Now we're gonna change the blending mode of this layer. So we're gonna take it from where it is here, our normal, and we're gonna set it to soft light. Now, I think what we'll actually do is duplicate that again. So you can either duplicate the layer by pressing Control or Command and J, or just go up to Layer, Duplicate Layer. So we can just call this one Blue 2, because this is the second blue layer. Now with this one, we're gonna change the blending mode from soft light, and we're gonna set it to lighten. So we get a little bit more of a, of a fill, a little bit more of a spill of light. So where it was before, it almost felt like the color blended into the hair and went behind the model, which is fine. But depending on your effect that you want, changing it to lighten now brings that light over the top. So as if you weren't using a light on the left-hand side, it fills the frame and looks a little bit more natural in terms of the spread of light. You can still uh, temper it. You can kind of reduce the effect a little bit by reducing the opacity. Um, or alternatively reducing the fill. But I'm happy with how it is here for the minute. We may change it once we've got the other colors. So we're gonna now add in the opposite side, which is gonna be our pink. So we're going back and basically repeating the same process over again. So we'll go back to our adjustment layers and then we'll go back up again to gradient. And now this time we do wanna change the color. So we're gonna click on that bar again and change the color. And again, it's completely up to you, but working in complementary tones is always a very, very good thing. So with blue, uh, generally, I mean, yellows work kind of quite nicely otherwise, um, but I think kind of these pinks and blues, they're quite a trendy types of complementary colors, even if they're not complementary directly on the, uh, the old color wheel. And now again, we want to change the angle of our lights coming in here. So we had it at zero degrees before, we're going to set it on the opposite axis, which is 180 degrees there. So again, you may want it top to bottom, you may even want it diagonally, it's, it's completely your call. So do the exact same thing again in terms of your blending modes. So we had one set to soft light, which was the same as our first blue one. And then we're going to duplicate that layer again. So we're going to go image, oh sorry, we're going to go layer, duplicate layer, and let's call this pink too. And again, the same here, and just raise this to lighten. Now, because it is quite a light color already, it doesn't necessarily have the same effect as the blue. If you've chosen two darker colors, you probably get that spill a little bit more pronounced. Now you can finish your project exactly where it is here, just by pressing the little burger bar in the top, going right to the bottom, almost to the bottom, 
and press and flatten image and stop your artwork from there. And then you can still, if you wish, make further tweaks and changes to that image. You can then make adjustment layers further um, by adding some more contrast and some more curves to it. So we can add a little bit more definition. Kind of pump those colors up a little bit more if you wanted to. It doesn't mean actually once you finish the steps of adding the color that the image has to stay where it is. We can maybe go another step further and go into our channel mixing tool. And our channel mixing tool will allow us to change the tones of the colors that are actually in there now. So if you look back on reflection and think maybe that pink's a little bit too strong, maybe it's not strong enough, maybe you wanted more of a blue, you can play around with the tones in there. So again, you've got lots of options in playing around with the, the color sliders. If you're adding more blue, if you're taking more away, just remember how that works. When you subtract a color, another color, its opposite color will fill in. So you can even get a little bit more creative if you wanted to. We can also add a lighting flare into the background. So if we go down to filter, render and lens flare, we then get a little preview screen here of Photoshop's lens flare and we can adjust the brightness of it, just position it as to where the light may have been coming from and we can actually see in our subject's eye we've been using a ring flash here. So if we actually position the light as if it's falling onto her face, you can change the different style of flare that we're actually going to get. I think actually it's quite nice, the movie prime one. I don't use that a lot because normally it is quite stylized but for this image in particular I think it does work. It gives us some nice uh, flares and some nice streaks of light which could actually be kind of quite modern for this type of image. So there we go. So from the image that we started with to what we've ended up, again just a couple of simple clicks. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you give it a try then obviously let us know. If you're an iPhotography member then get those photographs into the iPhotography gallery. Keep watching for more. Thank you very much for sticking with us.